The average American consumes over 120 pounds of sugar every year. That's over 300% the recommended amount. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about sugar and sugar substitutes, what to eat and what not to eat. Sugar obviously isn't healthy, we all know that. But what are you supposed to do? Just become a robot and never eat sugar again? No sugar for me. I don't know about you, but that life sounds really boring. That's why so many people today are swapping out sugar for sugar substitutes, and why wouldn't they? Because it's less calories, and that's all that matters, right? Wrong. Aspartame has become one of the most common sugar substitutes, and it's everywhere. It's in 6,000 different products, but you're gonna learn on this video today why it's actually one of the most toxic artificial sweeteners. From sodas to chewing gum to even toothpaste, aspartame is in everything and you're probably consuming way too much of it. So if you know someone who's eating way too much aspartame laden products like chewing gum and soda, share this video with them because I'm gonna really break down why aspartame is so toxic. But first, how did aspartame become so popular? So for starters, aspartame is 200 times sweeter than sugar and it's very, very cheap to manufacture. That's why it's used in so many different products. And if that sounds too good to be true, that's because it is. Aspartame is potentially a lot more toxic than sugars. We know sugar is bad, but aspartame is worse. And it's sold in a wide range of products that say sugar-free on the label. If you see sugar-free, it's gonna have aspartame or one of the other toxic sweeteners that I talked about on this video today. So in this video today, we're gonna to talk about what aspartame is, the detrimental impact aspartame has on brain health, the aspartame cancer connection, and other potential dangers of this chemical. And we'll also talk about better sugar-free alternatives to use instead. So what is aspartame? So aspartame is an artificial sweetener that's a chemical that's made in a lab. And the brands that aspartame is sold under are NutraSweet, Equal, Spoonful, Equal Measure, Candarel, Benevia, AminoSweet, and NutraTaste. And you've likely seen one or two of these names pop up on you know, the individual packets of sugar alternatives sold at restaurants or on different products because aspartame is the number one artificial sweetener sold in the world. Aspartame has been used in food products, and I say products because uh, they're not actually food. It's been used in the United States since the 1980s, and it's in over 6,000 different products. And that number, it blows my mind every time I hear it because that's a lot of toxic sweetening going on. And to make matters worse, aspartame also usually contains maltodextrin, which is genetically modified. It's a genetically modified corn. And so it makes it even more problematic. A lot of people are allergic to GMOs as well. So most aspartame contains maltodextrin, which to add insult to injury, also adds genetically modified organisms or genetically modified foods to the aspartame. And so that's the powder that you see in like the NutraSweet packet. It's a filler that is also added to the aspartame in the little packets. So let's talk about some of the dangers of aspartame. So there's a lot of them. So many people who regularly consume aspartame have reported a number of unwanted side effects. This includes headaches, mood changes, heart rate changes, digestive issues, weakness, dizziness, and joint pain. Unfortunately though, even with all of these side effects, the FDA has done nothing to pull this toxic sweetener off the shelves. Let's take a closer look at some of the unwanted side effects of this toxic sweetener aspartame. So let's look at brain health. So aspartame is a known neurotoxin. It has many detrimental effects on the central nervous system and the brain. And even Dr. Russell Blaylock, who's a world-renowned neurosurgeon, has said that aspartame kills brain cells. It's very problematic for the brain. So when your metabolism breaks down aspartame, it breaks it down into three toxic compounds, phenylalanine, aspartic acid, and methanol. So phenylalanine may have a direct effect on your mood and your psychological well-being by blocking neurotransmission. So that's the signaling between your brain cells. And phenylalanine specifically can block the production of serotonin and dopamine. So these two neurotransmitters are responsible for that feeling of calm, of focus, of motivation. So if you aren't making enough of these because you're ingesting too much phenylalanine, then that can result in depression and anxiety and other mood changes and mood disturbances. 
In high doses, aspartic acid is a toxin to your brain. It's a very excitatory compound. And it's also the precursor to glutamate, which is another excitatory compound. And some people are really sensitive to glutamate and glutamate overload. And over time, these excitatory compounds can lead to neurodegeneration and even kill your brain cells. Lastly, methanol creates reactive oxygen species or ROS production. And these two mechanisms have led researchers to believe that artificial sweeteners like aspartame are one of the leading causes of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So that's saying a lot. In one study, researchers examined the effects of aspartame on healthy adults by introducing it into their diet for eight days. And after the trial period, researchers found significant negative impacts on their cognition, mood, depression, and headaches. By the way, all the links to these studies that I'm talking about can be found in my article, Deadly Artificial Sweeteners, which I've linked to in the description below. So this is kind of scary, but we need to take a look at some of the aspartame cancer links. So let's get into it. So on the aspartame cancer debate side, you know, there's been a lot of research and, you know, correlations linking aspartame to cancer cell growth. But on the other side, the FDA has done little to deny these claims. At the end of the day, facts are facts. Research in animals shows that aspartame increases the risk of several types of cancers, including non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, leukemia, uterine cancer, bladder cancer, and multiple myeloma, which is cancer of the plasma cells. So according to the International Agency for Cancer Research, formaldehyde is considered a human carcinogen. And it's believed that methanol breaks down into formaldehyde, which is a very, very toxic compound that can lead to some forms of cancer. In 2006, a group of researchers received a lot of pushback when the results of their trial showed increases in malignant tumors in multiple organs in mice that were given aspartame. So critics claim that these researchers misinterpreted the data and that the results were due to infection, not cancer. But in April 2021, these same researchers carried out the exact same research study. They controlled for this supposed infection that threw a wrench in the results and they got the exact same findings where that the rats that were fed aspartame had aggressive cancers. If you want to read this study for yourself, you can get the link down below in the description to my article, Deadly Artificial Sweeteners. By far the most well-researched dangers of aspartame are neurodegenerative diseases and cancer, but there's some other symptoms that aspartame is linked to as well, namely seizures. So seizures are a neurological condition, and when you consume aspartame, it's an excitatory compound, which can contribute to an already overexcited nervous system. That's what a seizure is. It's a kind of an electrical storm that happens in the brain, the central nervous system. So anyone with a neurological condition should avoid aspartame. So far, aspartame is pretty much striking out. It also contributes to gut dysbiosis as well. So evidence also suggests that aspartame can directly affect your gut microbiome and alter the flora and fauna in your gut, which can have a lot of different impact on your weight, on your immune system, and your digestion as well. So if you don't want disaster pants, you need to put that splenda down. So let's talk about fibromyalgia, which is a pain condition. So one study showed that women who consumed aspartame had increases in pain, and those who removed the aspartame from their diet had a decrease in their level of pain. And that makes perfect sense because aspartame is excited toward the nerve system and that can increase pain signals to the brain. So I really don't wanna scare you here, but a lot of these food companies do marketing to say that these artificial sweeteners are healthier than sugar, but they're not. So if you have a sweet tooth and you don't wanna be overweight, what are you to do? So I wanna talk about some of the alternatives to toxic artificial sweeteners. So one of my favorites is Stevia. This is Stevia Clear, but there's lots of different brands on the market that you can use, preferably organic. And Stevia is made from the Stevia plant. It's a native of Brazil and Paraguay and it's been used as a medicinal herb for hundreds of years, and it's 300 times sweeter than sugar. So research shows that stevia has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects, and it may even improve insulin sensitivity in those with insulin resistance. So this is great news for those that are diabetic. The next natural sweetener that I really like is monk fruit. It looks just like sugar, it's like sugar granules, 
and it's sold under the brand name Lakanto, which is very popular in the United States. Monk fruit is a small fruit native to China, and it's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years. And it's the, the sweetener that I used in my daily detox supplement. So I've got a little bit of stevia and a little bit of monk fruit in here to make this totally carbohydrate free and to make it taste really good as well. And the active compound in monk fruit is also antioxidant. It has anti-inflammatory properties as well, and it's about 150 times sweeter than sugar. So the next natural sugar substitute that you can use is erythriol. So erythriol is a sugar substitute and it's a sugar alcohol. So it's not an alcohol, it's not sugar, it's what's called a sugar alcohol, but some people can have sensitivity to it if they eat too much of it. It can give them loose stools, but fortunately very few people have this side effect. So there you have it. So I know for me, I'm never gonna consume aspartame again. It's just not worth the risk. And that's why I wanted to make this video is to help you make a better informed decision on sugar substitutes. So if you wanna learn more about natural sweeteners more in depth, you can watch my video right here. It's Safe Natural Sweeteners. I made this video a long time ago and it'll really give you a lot of detailed information on the safest natural sugar substitutes. So if you're one of many people trying to curb your sugar intake, things may not be as cut and dried as they seem. So just remember, all food companies have entire buildings of food researchers trying to find that exact combo of ingredients, including aspartame, to get you hooked on their food products. While reducing the amount of sugar in your diet is key for optimum health, what you choose as a sugar substitute is very important as well. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Wendy Myers.